Gals and guys, what's going on? Welcome to Shop Talk with Joe Part 18. I know I'm way overdue with this, but just had a lot going on. Uh, tried to share as much video with you guys as I could of the projects I had going on, but we're back to Shop Talk. So um, I just want to say, um, you know, I really appreciate the fact that I'm getting great comments about my videos for shop talk just shooting from the hip you're seeing it straight out i don't edit nothing i you know it, it is what it is you know so um it's a very personal thing and it's it's kind of cool and i'm glad that you folks are enjoying it thank you very much for you know giving me great comments on my channel i really appreciate that big time um i got some shout outs that I want to do, but first of all, we got to do our Native American for uh, Shop Talk 18, and we have a Navajo medicine man. Unbelievable, right, folks? That guy's got to be 150 years old. So anybody who likes to uh, lay out in the sun, um, you might want to take note. <laughs> But anyhow, yeah, Navajo uh, medicine man. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try and keep this video within a reasonable amount of time, but that is definitely not gonna happen. This is gonna be a long one. I've got a lot of questions and answers, great topics. I got a lot of great stuff. You guys won't even believe what I got going on in this one. Whoa! And I got a surprise at the end. So check it out. Um, I want to do some shout outs. Prima Wedge, what's going on, buddy? Uh, great comments. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. You got a great channel. I appreciate it. Go check out Prima Wedge. Um, as always, Timmy Ledoux. How y'all are, bud? Yeah, man. I'll be giving you a call later this afternoon. Um, Terry, T.W. Wilburn. Check him out. T.W. Wilburn. He's got a... Uh, He's got a great channel. He's up in uh, Maritime Canada. Very, very nice folks. I just want to say hello to him and his wife. And thank you for watching my videos. I appreciate that. And uh, I just want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. Oh, it's unbelievable how many new subscribers I've gotten. You know, I try to keep up on everybody's channel, but it's just really difficult for me. But I just want to let you know I really appreciate you know, all my new subs. But let's move on uh, to question and answer. Get that out of the way. Uh, good buddy of mine out in Rochester, New York, Denny Brooks. Wait a minute. I said Denny Brooks and I realized I didn't open my beer. Didn't open my PBR. I'm slacking off. Let's get this show started off right, folks. And you know what else I realized? We don't have any music. So let's get some music going. Um, I'm going to play some original Nectar music um, from way back. And uh, it's, it's really cool. We start out with 2001 A Space Odyssey. And Chuck Richards, for you, we go into um, a Terrapin Station. So this is a very rare, very rare piece of music piece of uh, music that I have been able to save but check it out yeah good stuff 2001 a space odyssey we had fun with that um, but I, I wanted uh, I wanted to answer Denny Brooks question he said how do you put a deer in a Subaru? You don't, jackass. You put it on the roof. Really? It's that simple. That's what you do with a dead deer in a Subaru. Unless you, you don't have far to go, and then you can just drag it. But, um, but more. But thanks a lot for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Welcome aboard, man. And uh, you wanted to see more axes. I'm going to show more axes. As a matter of fact, that's going to be part of the topics for this video. 
so uh, you'll definitely see that. Captain John, how come we don't see Sandy? Well, since you've asked that question, um, that was really the inspiration for me to go out and do um, a video on, you know, having lunch with a cup of noodles and doing a snowshoe. So, um, now you guys have seen Sandy. Sandy is absolutely wonderful. She's loved my life. She's the greatest thing in the world. And I just really appreciate her and the time that we do get to spend together. But John, thanks a lot for asking. Marie Daniels, um, she wanted to know, great question. Marie Daniels wanted to know um, my rod, my fishing rod set up for hiking and why. Uh, that's a really great question. What I like to use is about a five and a half foot medium to ultralight two-piece rod. Um, Dick Sporting Goods has great deals on them. Get the, get, just get the rod and then um, go ahead and pick yourself out a reel. You know, and it's going to be an ultralight reel for the most part, you know, and that's the type of fishing that I do um, when I go backpacking. I do a lot of trout fishing. You know, if I if I get lucky and you know land a 22 inch walleye on four pound test, well, so be it to me, and I have done that. But um, that's the package that I prefer to carry. Why? Um, because of the weight, because of the fact it breaks down in two pieces, and nothing extends above or below my pack. So I'm not going to be breaking rod tips or anything like that. But um, yeah, Marie, great, great question. Thanks a lot for watching. Jesse Martin, have I ever had a real life survival situation? Yes, I have on many occasions. Um, I don't plan to put myself in a situation, but sometimes it happens, you know, and if you really enjoy and experience the outdoors, you really don't know what can happen. I was in college in Saranac Lake and I was deer hunting. We were deer hunting by boat. We went out to a particular point and my job was to drive this point and we had guys on the mainland watching for whatever I drove off this point. Well, what had happened is it started snowing really, really bad, really hard. There was already about a foot down on the ground and it just, it come down like you can't believe and I got turned around and I got mixed up down in a cedar swamp and um, I tried to turn around to follow my tracks back out and they were gone that's how hard it was snowing that my tracks were gone so I figured I better find a good spot and build a shelter and hunker down and that's exactly what I did I uh, I found a good spot where I knew I wasn't going to get wet if water rose for any reason and I just set up a simple shelter with pine boughs and climbed in there, built myself a fire and I was just fine. I had a couple of granola bars with me which was good enough for something to eat. Um, I basically, uh, I had a water bottle on me too which was, which was really important. So I just kept filling that with snow, sticking it in my jacket until the snow melted, and I always had, you know, water. But there's many situations where, you know, I've had to deal with. That was probably about the worst because I did, I did spend that night outdoors before my buddy uh, come and found me, and it was five, five degrees above above zero that night, and I just kept the fire going, and I was fine. I was just fine. So. Great question, Jesse. Thanks for asking. Weston Wood, my EDC, everyday carry on me. Um, that's big because I carry a pack. Um, everywhere I go, I carry a range bag. That includes my 40 caliber pistol, includes a um, first aid kit, and care. It includes fire starting kit, includes hydration. There's, I have everything in there. But my everyday carry that I've been using lately is the Kershaw Burst. Great knife. Um, I also always carry, I got my cell phone, belt I made, and uh, this is a Sodbuster 2, Case Sodbuster 2, 
with a sheath that I made with my initials on it. So, and of course, I got about a dollar eighty in, in in my in my money pocket. So, just kidding. Thanks for the question, Weston. Um, Tim Wadu wanted to know. Do I ride a motorcycle and what do I ride? No, I don't ride a motorcycle. Um, I've had dirt bikes, but I've just lost too many friends on road bikes. Uh, it's kind of a sorry subject with me, but it's always been a dream of mine to own a you know motorcycle and ride the roads, but you just don't ever know when somebody's going to make a mistake and it's not going to be your fault and when that happens on a motorcycle things don't turn out well so but timmy thanks for the question garrett have i ever have i ever caught a trout and what is the biggest i've caught so many trout it, it make your head spin but um the biggest trout that i caught was a uh, 19 inch rainbow and that was a crane pond up in the Adirondack Mountains. Um, but then again, salmon are also in the trout family. Trout are in the salmon family, actually. And I've caught a 35 and a half pound king salmon. So, you know, it's kind of hard to say, but I absolutely love trout fishing. As I explained to um, my question for Marie Daniels, yeah. You know, that's why I carry a rod set up like that is because I do. I fish the mountains and I catch a lot of trout. So, um, moving on. Thanks, Garrett. Backyard meat. Backyard meat asked me this question. Honestly, folks, he asked me this question. He says, if there were no more PBRs, Pops Blue Ribbon, what kind of beer would you drink? Well, I gotta think about that. I have absolutely no idea what my next choice would be. You know, there's a lot of micro beers out there that I, I really like, you know, but, um, God, if I didn't have PBR, I, I don't know. You know, I don't think I could really drink a light beer, but. I really kind of can't answer your question. Sorry about that, Aaron. But good question. Thanks for asking me. Hey, folks, we got to move on to topics because uh, we're already into like 13 minutes of me blapping. But recent projects, what's been going on? Um, as you can see over here, I got axe heads like crazy. I'm going to just slide you a second. And I'm waiting on handles. Handle house has totally let me down. I'm, I'm 16 days I placed an order for handles and I'm just hanging out waiting. They said that, you know, they were gonna be custom, but it ain't happening for me. This one here is really nice. This is a boy's ax head. It's a Walters. I got this from the Adirondack Woodsman, absolutely beautiful head. Look at that black patina on there, natural, wonderful shape. So I'm really looking forward to hanging that one. And I've got a um, uh, Cold Steel Trail Boss that's been through the vinegar bath. It's got the edge all set on it, the eyes all cleaned out, ready to go. So, looking forward to hanging that one. I just love that blade shape, isn't that great? That's gonna look beautiful. And here I have that Kelly Flint True Temper Bell System. It's been all through the vinegar bath. It's all ready to go, it's all cleaned up. And I also, where is it? I have the sheath made for it. I've already made the sheath. I left uh, plenty of length on the, on the strap. All basket weave sheath. And that's all the way around. It's all basket weave. So, 
once I get it hung, then I'll know how how long to cut my cut my my retention strap. So, but yeah, I'm really really excited about that. That's a sweet project. That basket weave takes forever. I don't care what anybody says. Ain't hey, here's a uh, here's a Collins head that I got. Pretty much a boy's axe size, I would say. And that's been through the vinegar bath. It hasn't been wire wheeled yet. That's why that that um, temper line, the tempering shows up so so much on that. But and then of course the one from my buddy Timmy Ledoux. And I've I've got a uh, handle on order, but this has to go into the petroleate soak, and then it'll go in the wire wheel, and it'll clean up pretty good. You'd be surprised. But here's a real sweetheart I've been working on. How you like that sheath? This is a plum from 1928 to 1932. Um, it's got, it had the original handle on it and I drove the handle out and I was able to save it with a great haft. Hafting came out phenomenal. So I'm really, really excited about that. I took the handle down. It was an original um, fire, fire brand handle and I'll show you how pretty the head came out it was in incredible condition look at that look at that heat treat line is that amazing <coughs> yeah I'm pretty excited about that so I got to figuring I would do a little carving on the leather and doing some different type of tooling and you know that's what uh, that's what I came up with <coughs> excuse me <coughs> one of you folks also had asked me why don't I sign my work why don't I use a brand on my work well I do that's my initials in a circle JMY so I'm glad you brought that up because I don't always sign my stuff and I should You know, but yeah, I'm really happy with this project. Absolutely beautiful little axe Really psyched about it. Um, I've also It's all in clamps right now I've also got a knife sheath sheath going for that beautiful Randall knife that you saw of my friends he ordered this uh, sheath from me with his initials on it, and uh, he wanted it to be a high carry so it doesn't hang way down, so I've got the belt loop tightened up pretty high, and this is going to be for around the handle, you know, and I'll have him bring the knife over so I can fit that perfect, but he wanted a ferro rod holder, and I put one right in there for him. So, from one of my deer antler feral, feral rods. So, yeah. But that's what I've been up to, folks. Busy as shit, keeping myself busy. Um, what else is going on? I'm working a second job. It sucks. I can't stand it. I'm working in another sign shop, basically sweeping floors, you know, painting real estate signs out. Um... I just spent two weeks painting a scissor lift. Oh, what a crap job that is. But you know what? Being in the new vehicle, I've incurred some new expenses and whatnot. And I'm just making sure that, you know, ends are covered and all things are all good to go. Um, what else is going on? Well, I got some big news for you guys. Chuck, are you hearing this Terrapin station? Unbelievable. Um, check. 
check this out, folks. Uh, I'm going on a road trip this coming Friday morning, and I'm going to see a fellow YouTuber. Most of you folks know exactly who this person is I'm going to see, but I'm really excited about it. We're going to have a great time. Um, it's going to be really interesting. We're going to shoot a whole bunch of videos, so everybody's going to be able to check this whole experience out. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. I am packing up my car, and I'm headed four hours dead north, and I'm going to see Boss of the Swamp. I'm going to go out, and uh, we're going to go out to the cabin with Frankie, and we're going to, we're just going to, we're just going to have a good time and share many stories and just uh, shoot some really great video and just we'll be taking you guys along with us, you know, and gals. So look forward to that. That's going to be hot. That's this coming weekend. Um, I just want to throw a closing phrase at you guys. Um, one of my new subscribers, Randy J. Hey, buddy, what's going on? He, he, he shot some phrases my way, and they were really good. And what I really liked was, Deep roots are not reached by the frost. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. Um, always want to uh, remind you guys, please leave me a comment. Please ask me a question. You know, I'll answer them. I'm not done with this yet. I said I was going to go to Shop Talk Part 20 and stop it there, but I I, I got some folks that don't agree. They want me to keep it going on. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm going to leave you guys with a quick joke, okay? What's the difference between a Goodyear tire and 365 used condoms? One is a Goodyear. One is a great year. I hope everybody's well out there. Thanks a lot for watching Shop Talk with Joe Part 18. I'll be back with Part 19. Thanks, folks. Hope all is well.